Hi, my name is Tiffany Jernigan. I'm a developer advocate at VMware. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the open source tool CAP, which is part of the Carvel tool set. To check out Carvel, you can go to carvel.dev. So CAP is used to deploy and view a group of Kubernetes resources as an application. For instance, your application could consist of a deployment and a service. CAP will wait for all the resources you're creating or modifying before it exits. And with each creation and change, you can see what's happening with each resource. So the first thing that we'll want to do is to create a state namespace. Basically, this namespace is what CAP is going to use to store well the state of your application or applications. So this will be, you'll see things like a config map, for instance. So let's create that. All right. So now what we'll want to do is we'll want to create a namespace for our application. We'll want our application, so we're going to be using a deployment, and then we'll be using a service. So let's copy this and create a new file with that. So we can see here that basically with the service, I am listing here that's of type cluster IP. That is actually by default, but we're going to be changing that later. So just to make it more clear, I have that in here right now. So this is going to create like, th there's going to be three different resources that are going to be created. So you probably are used to just using kubectl apply, and then it you would do kubectl apply dash F and it'll create all of these. So here is actually where we're going to be using cap instead. It's pretty similar looking. So you have a deploy, it's cap deploy. We're going to use that state namespace. You have the dash F for your file. The difference here is that we're actually giving it an application name. So all these things that we're creating are associated with each other. So let's go and create that. We can see here that it's creating those three different resources. So beforehand, if you don't have like a dash Y, it won't automatically create it. And it'll just tell you what, what is happening. What is going, what's the operation that's going to happen here. So if we just do a Y, then it'll go and actually create these resources. We can actually see every single thing that it's going through and doing. You can see it as it's waiting to reconcile. You can see the individual weights, what it's pending on, like specifically things like creating the container. And it goes through and waits until everything is actually done before it terminates. So if we want to take a look to see this deployment and service that we have up, we could do just a regular kubectl get, for instance. If we do that, we can see that we have this deployment with its two replicas and we have our service, which is of the type cluster IP. So the only way right now that we can access our web page is from within the cluster. So one way we could do that is we could use kubectl run and use an image that just does curl and we can do that with our uh, service endpoint. And then we can just see that it just ends up spitting out the HTML for the web page. You can tell that it actually did something because you can see that it says a cat and a dog. If we want to take a look to see what applications we have running with cap, we can do cap list. The dash A is just for all namespaces. So we can see here that we have the cap demo namespace. And within that, we have our application spring pet clinic. And that's in we have that spring pet clinic namespace as well. If you ran other things before doing this, then you would see them here. But since we didn't, all we have is that one. So if we didn't have cap and we wanted to see all the resources in this application, there are some ways that you could do it. For this one, we could do a kubectl get all. Get all doesn't actually get all the different types of API resources that there are. There are quite a few. So it kind of depends on what we're creating with this. So if you had things that weren't in there, it would be a little complicated. And then say if you have multiple deployments or so running in that same namespace, but they're not all related to each other, what would you do then? So like one thing you do is you could go ahead and you could add labels, but then if you, you basically, you need to search for all the different types of API resources that you care about, then you would have to go based on those specific labels. So CAP, it actually does this for you. So if we take a look at these resources that we just created, but with the show labels flag, we can actually see that there is one that's created here and you can see it as well over here on the service. 
So these are associated actually with, there's a config map that it's related to keeping state. And if again, if you want to look into that more, uh, click on the link up in the blog for the state namespace. We could also take a look at all the resources actually with cap. So we can do a cap inspect. So instead of all those things that we would need to do with cube cuddle, we can just do a cap inspect and we can actually see these are all the things that are created. So there's the ones that we specifically listed. So there's the namespace, there's the service, and there's deployment. And then which with each of those, there are the resources that are needed that are created as well. So things like with endpoints of the service, with the deployment, there's the replica set, and then there's the pods as well. And you can see like how, what, like the state for all of these different things, what, like who owns it and all the different like details for it. And that there's within this application, there are separate resources that are created. If we were having this application where, th where things were still running, and it wasn't already done, we could do a dash F and you could follow with the logs, but we're already done, so we're just gonna take a look. But you can go ahead and see all the different things that are happening. We can see the st things that are happening with uh, Spring Pet Clinic, and you can see at the end it succeeded. So we can also do things like updating our application. Right now with it, with the cluster IP, again, we can only access our website from within the cluster. So we can change that, for instance, to change the cluster IP type to type load balancer. So if we go ahead and edit that file, and then change that. So what we can do is another cap deploy. The only difference with this command and the one that we had before is that this one has a dash C. And that's just there so that we can do a diff on the changes that are happening to verify, hey, is this exactly what I want to change? So if we do that, then we can just see, oh, look, I'm changing the type from cluster IP to load balancer and that the thing that I'm trying to update is the service. And you can see that the operation is an update. So then we can just click Y and that will go ahead and just update that cluster IP to load balancer. And then like earlier, it's basically going to go and wait until this load balancer is actually created. All right, so now that that is created, we can do a cube cuddle get on that service to get the external IP. So we can see here. So if, if this is still running at the time where you're following along, you could also copy this link or this URL and uh, paste it in with just like the IP and also be able to access my application here. So as you can see, uh, basically we have it running. We can access it from outside. You can see the different things that we're changing. So basically that is like a high level overview of the, th the general things that you can do with CAP. If you want to see all the things you can do, you can just do a CAP-H and you can actually see all the things that you can do with that and play around with it and look into it some more. If you want to tear down what we have running, um, there's only two things that we really have to do. You can do a cap delete and this will go ahead and like all the other commands that are running, it'll tell you all the things that are being changed. So here we can see that those three things are the things that we specifically were listing and things we're creating and as a result, all the other things that need to be deleted as well. So it's going to go and delete those. And again, it follows through. You can see all the different things that it's waiting on as it's going through and trying to delete all of those resources that we were just creating. So the last thing that we need to do is just delete that namespace that we used for our state namespace. So if you want to learn more, there are several different links at the bottom of this guide. You can also go to carvel.dev. Hopefully you learned something today, so thanks for watching.